Hello friends, in this lecture we are going to learn about virtual circuit networks. So till now we have studied about datagram network and circuit switched network. In a datagram network, so if there is a sender and there is a receiver, then the packets or the datagrams that are being sent, they are all independent of each other which means they can take different path packet one might take this path packet two might take this particular path okay so delays can be different they can be out of order and you have no guarantee of service that okay your packets will reach but here in circuit switched network it's like a telephone network so when you have you are talking so first you make a call setup and then you reserve resources okay it means that I'm saying now I'm reserving this particular path and I'm having guaranteed bandwidth for my telephone call. Okay, that is circuit switching. Both of them have their benefits and disadvantages. Okay, so for example, datagram network, there is more resource utilization. Okay, there will be more bandwidth, more users can be allocated in a circuit switch network. So you have resource allocated to the users. So if they are not active, they are going to be unutilized and bandwidth or the network resources are underutilized. So these are the two end points. So there is something in between these datagram and circuit switch network that is known as virtual circuit. A virtual circuit network is a cross between a circuit switch network and a datagram network. So it has a characteristic of both with the aim of having best of both the faults. Okay, so it has something good from datagram network, something good from circuit switch network. So here it is based on the datagram network. Okay, but we have so you will have packets okay flowing from source to destination but unlike the datagram network they will be following up the same path so for this we have here the three phases are there so call setup phase okay so there is a setup phase then there is data transfer phase and there is tear down and the efficiency is good what is the delay we will look at it so let's look at this example so there, this is the switching network. So these you can assume as routers, okay? The end systems are A, B, C, and D. They can send packets to each of them, okay, each other. So now what happens is if in a datagram network, if A was sending packet to B, then first packet could have followed this path. The second packet, if there was congestion, would have followed this path. So and in fact packet one might have reached later than packet two so out of order it can be there is no guarantee if packet loss is there then it's just best service possible service is there in a circuit switch network on the other hand as we said a path will be dedicated path will be there so here in a datagram network if you want to make a dedicated path so there should be a setup phase on the routers and how it happens let's try to see so we have what is known as a virtual circuit identifier okay so if there is a path from your previous node a to b then we need a virtual circuit identifier so that should identify that okay a and b are talking to each other so this will be my virtual circuit and each link here needs an identifier okay so that whole virtual circuit you can give one identifier but we will see that inside this each of the link has got one identifier so your routers or switches have ports okay so there is one incoming port and there is one outgoing port okay so usually in datagram network the routing takes place based on the destination okay so it happens based on the destination of the packet but here first we make a reservation of the path and then we have a virtual circuit identifier for routing let's see how it happens a and b are talking so each packet has a virtual circuit identifier 
it comes to some port of this and it goes out of another port and the virtual circuit is identifier is there for each link okay so let's try to look at it so there is a data packet okay and they have they are coming on port one okay so this is a switch and on port one two packets come so this is packet one this is packet two and this is a routing table for the virtual circuit network so incoming and outgoing table is there okay so for incoming ports our port is one and virtual circuit identifier is 14 okay and then another for another packet it is 77 now when this packet let's say data with virtual circuit identifier 14 comes here and it is coming on port 1 so it looks in the table so port 1 is there and it finds that virtual circuit identifier is 14 so it will send it to port 3 and the virtual circuit identifier will become 22 so what happens is that if this is the sender this is the receiver and this is the path being followed the reserved path then the virtual circuit identifier for each link there is a virtual circuit identifier so 21 35 403 6240 so these are the virtual circuit identifier for each link and this whole thing tells you the path okay so at each of these switches there will be a table like this that okay this is coming at port 21 port let's say 2 and virtual circuit identifier is 21 so it should be transferred to port 5 and virtual circuit identifier should become 35 so now you might ask that why are there so many virtual circuit identifier for one virtual circuit why will each link should have different virtual circuit identifier so the reason is if you just choose one virtual circuit identifier for the whole virtual circuit network so what will have the whole path then let's say i choose 1035 as my vci for whole path packet is coming here and let's say the router here already had an entry of virtual circuit identifier as 1035 then he could not have allocated this so hence when the request phase the packet is coming so this router will now decide which virtual circuit identifier it should give so it should be available so this is the source to destination data transfer so a is sending to b so data is there and vci is 14 so now he looks up so it, this is port 1 and vci is 14 so this table tells us that forward it to port 3 so don't forward it to 4 don't forward it to port 2 forward it to port 3 and now give it a vci which is 66 so i take the data put a new vci which is 66 now it comes to this particular switch it will look at port 1 okay i'm at port 1 vci is 66 so where should i go port 2 and vci i should put as 22 now this packet reaches here at port 2 and vci is 22 it should go to port 3 and vci is 77 so this is there now you may ask that how is how are these tables allocated so this is allocated in the setup phase so this is the setup request so datagram network so initially i'm sending a packet to destination b now this packet goes here and this a decides the link vci for this one so it says that okay i'm going here so it says that okay this is port 1 and vci is 14 then based on the destination address it finds that okay let's make the port number should be 3 where it should be routed now when it comes and here i cannot fill this part because this vci what should be put will be decided by this switch so a packet comes here okay so this has now it comes to this one at port one okay 
now it will say that okay and it say sees that okay it's a setup request is there so it puts a virtual circuit identifier 66 and based on the destination of the packet finds that okay it has to send it to port 2 so it comes the packet comes to request packet comes to switch 3 at port 2 and now what happens it can feel that okay it is coming at port 2 it assigns a VCI uh, an available VCI to it which is port VCI 22 and now this one it says it's out at port 3 but it doesn't know what VCI to assign to it it comes to B and it assigns a VCI 77 then it sends an act that okay that I am ready to receive so this packet when it goes so it comes at port 3 and now this router will know that okay the virtual circuit identifier is 77 so let's look here so this 77 VCI comes here switch 3 will now know that okay this is the ACK for your request packet so port 2 and VCI 22 was there now outgoing will be 3 and VCI should be 77 this packet goes now and for this link the switch 3 puts the VCI as 22 now this switch knows that okay this particular field should be 22 which was not filled here so this one so it's filled here this goes back here and now it was 66 which was assigned earlier this switch will learn it from the act packet and put this 66 here so now your setup phase is complete and all the switches have their virtual circuit identifiers so now when they see the packet okay the virtual circuit is 14 it has it is at port 1 it should go at port 3 with virtual circuit identifier 66 then it comes here okay so vci is 66 it's coming at port 1 transfer it forward it to port 2 with vci 22 it goes here and now you have port 2 and vci is 22 so forward it to port 3 vci is 77 so this is done and virtual circuit switching all packet belonging to the same source and destination so they travel the same path because we have vci virtual circuit identifier and hence a route for the packet will be the same but the packets may arrive at destination with different delays okay so that is there so i hope you understand this thanks a lot